a couple of months back, I think in October, I took on a particular position willingly, something that I love to do passionately, that I show up for it without even transport, like everything for it, I do it. So now, um, in January, I think like the second week of January, this person comes to me and tells me that, Penny, now, now I think it's high time, like you take on this position like permanently, like you've done so well that we didn't expect you to do it that way. So I was like, now doubt came in. Yeah, I was like, ah, can I really do it? Do you think I'm the right person to do this? Like, so many things came into my mind. I was like, maybe first hold on, <laughs> like I think about it. So when I went back home in my bed, I was like, but wait, Benina, you're a coach. <laughs> so, like, what happened to this person who was so confident at the end of the year <laughs> that right now they feel like they can't do anything, that the confidence is so low. So when you talked about also build, confidence is built, I realized that I stopped building. <laughs> like, along the way, I stopped working on it. So when that point came in, I was like, I have to take away all the things that create doubt in me. Yeah. My question is, uh, since we are in the business of helping people, mm -hmm. and most of the things that we are going to do, they are not new to us, mm -hmm. and most of the like most of the times, most people have done it. But then, my, my, there is a problem of um, uh, imposter syndrome. syndrome yes. Mm. So you find like most times mm. you're going to do something which someone has already done, mm -hmm. and sometimes you want to be like them, mm -hmm. so you end up facing a challenge of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome that? Mm -hmm. How do you overcome that? Then another question is about uh, when we are choosing niches, like niches. Um, like, okay, like, so there are some people here like who don't like, because some of them are, are choosing fields where maybe like they are in their profession, mm -hmm. but then there are others who are just going to choose from a random thing. Mm. So uh, my question is, do you have to choose something that you have, like, you, you have a lot of knowledge in it, or you can just choose from any field, and then you work your way out into it? Okay, so let's start with the imposter syndrome, because that is, uh, most of the questions that are going to ask to be asked here, also, like, they are questioned in our, past, they're questions in our personal lives, because there is nothing under new, the sun, and, and, and I mean, and new under the sun. Everything has been, done, has been done. Someone else has built that business. Someone else has built a brand like the brand that you want to build. And so because of the global village that we are living in, we have access to all that info. Mission. Now remember, each one of us is uniquely gifted, that even when the gifts look alike, there is the uniqueness in DNA and, and, and the fingerprints and how we deliver and the authenticity that we can both be personal growth coaches and we deliver differently. Because you will not have my voice. You will not have my story. You will not have my experiences. You will not have the kind of exposures that I have had. So I come with my own uniqueness. The problem is we don't believe or we don't take time to map out our own uniqueness because we must all map it out. Do you think that by me sharing my personal story, that every time I sit down and, uh, or I sat down one day and I just remembered and I said, this is how the story is and this is how the story is. No, it took me down to sit down and be able to map out my story, how I grew up, where I grew up from, what transpired in my life, what are the things that I see I am doing right now that I could have gotten from my story, okay? What as, so now it became fresh in my memory that when I am speaking, nuggets are able to come into my mind that apply to the same point that I'm talking about. And then you'll ask yourself, how do you colorate your speech to your story? It's not because I rehearsed my speech. No. It's because I have the story at the back of my mind and I have the store and, and I have the, and, and I have whatever it is when I sit down to think everything that I have said and you have ever heard me talk about it's because it has gone I have gone through so I sit down and map out my story that how come how did I overcome overwhelm how did I get unstuck every topic that I've talked about how do I dominate because according to 
others who see me, they're like, okay, you have dominated this industry for the past 15 years. And then I go and ask myself, how did I dominate this industry in the past 15 years? And I will have pointers to put down. But remember, I have already mapped out my, st my story. It's at the back of my mind. So when I speak, I don't need to go and look at points that others made. And then I come and reintroduce uh, uh, the same points that others made. Because it's possible they don't apply to me. And when they don't apply to me, I'm going to be very shallow when I'm speaking about them. Why? Because it was their thought, their process. By the time someone says something, they took time to think about it. They took time to digest it. It makes a lot of meaning to them. So they, represent, they present it in a way that makes a lot of meaning. So if I copy and paste, it's like I'm copying and someone's exams and I'm copying their name and, and their index number and I'm putting it on my, on my paper. Okay? But I will tell you, there is nothing new that you are going to speak. There is nothing new that you're going to do. So that means whoever you follow, whoever you see, should be a motivation and an inspiration. Not to copy and paste. Or do exactly what they are doing. Otherwise, you're going to take too long to find out who you really are. Because you love this person and the way they speak. You are attracted to them. It does not mean that you are going to be exactly like them. You are carving out your own path. So, be inspired, be authentic. Be inspired, be original. Be inspired, be yourself. There are some people that have tried to speak fast and yet they are slow speakers. And there are people who have tried to speak slow let me tell you, there is a day, I, I, I don't know whether I've shared this with you, but there is a time someone came in the congregation, I think we were doing uh, hold, hold, hold My Hand, and someone came and told me, but you, you speak too fast? Do you think people understand you? <laughs> this, it was the very first, first time he actually showed up, and I have never seen him again. Or oh, who the devil will put on people's flesh <laughs> and will be incarnate and show up. This person... Let me tell you, I started second-guessing myself. Now, this is uh, what I'm telling you, that you can build and build and build, and it will be something small that twists your mind to rethink and ask yourself and question yourself. And so, I was like, you, you, you speak too much. I think you need to, people, to give people time. You know, I've been in this public speaking arena for a very long time. And then you, you need to give people time to breathe so that they can understand what you have said. And in that moment, they looked like they were talking the truth. Has the devil ever said that the lie and it sounded like the truth? <laughs> now, that, that's exactly what was happening. While everyone was hugging me, everyone was telling me today was life changing. Today was GD Dens. Everything you have said was about me. You know, uh, some people even giving me money. You know how someone will, will say, you know what? I know I've, I've, ne I've never, whatever, sold into your ministry, but this is fuel. And someone is giving you 500,000 for fuel. As Meanwhile, this one is saying, you're speaking too fast, people don't understand what you're saying. And guess what? One bad comment will cover all the good comments that you have received. And I left that hall without anyone knowing that my mind, my, my, I was downcast in my spirit and I was questioning all the years that I have done this because naturally my speed is high. I can't control it. And so I came back to, to Tim. Actually, he picked me. And so when he picked me, I was like, what's wrong? I mean, you're always hyped up. I was like, can you believe there is this man who came and, and told me this team laughed. So he was like, do you want me to park so we can have this conversation? I was like, no, you continue driving. I was like, since when did you start doubting yourself? I was like, you know, like when he said it, like it sounded like he meant it and it was the truth. And he was like, so all the people that you have impacted for the past how many years have been lying to you? And now, I'm against get a do, do you see how, like, one bad comment can cloud your judgment about everything good that you have ever done. So, all the years, all the people that you have met, all the countries you have traveled to, all the media, as in 
everything you are undoing it because there is someone who had the audacity and had the, the, the confidence to walk to you and whisper these words to you. And he told me, I don't know this person that I am with to be my wife. This is not my wife. This is another person. So tell me any other conversation. But this is just not making sense to me. Otherwise, I would have been the first one to tell you, Kendeza, Koko speed. But I know you, whether you're speaking to me alone, whether you're speaking to our children, whether you're speaking to anyone, your speed is your speed. And we have all got. So these people that have, come in, have been coming every week, so to say, they have been coming to waste their time because they don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> you know how someone, and that is why we need people to be able to lift our spirits in such moments. Let me tell you, where you can fall the hardest is when you are the highest. Otherwise, but when you are at the peak of your performance, one thing can crumble you and you will be down in no minute. And that is where you need pillars and a community of people that know you, that understand you, that can be able to tell you, to disapprove you and even laugh at you and tell you, look at you. I don't know who this person is. Okay? So, imposter syndrome. Never try to be anyone else. Mimic anyone else's voice. Otherwise, we will know. Because bagamba mazina amakope gakolachi. Game nyo mugongo. Because ogeza kwe kutuwa lechi watonje jeshita kolachi. Jeshita ina kugenda. Okay? So, how you deal with imposter syndrome is... And imposter syndrome is not just about copying and, and pasting. Imposter syndrome is about... Um, you la not knowing your self-worth and whether you actually deserve to have that authority and do those things. So now you're like, huh. now the people that are speaking, they have the authority. They seem to have built their profiles. They seem to have, now who am I? Like, how do I even appear and start saying these, these things? Like, Buvumuchi when in a background, Jemva Mubichi. Let me tell you, if it were imposter syndrome, I would have the one that would have been thrown away by the imposter syndrome because I didn't have any background to brag from. I didn't have any family to brag about. Like no one, Naja Kuchibuga and Zeka, Wanamuniginogu. My father did not even know what I'm supposed to do, and my mother didn't know what I was supposed to do at campus. I was figuring out I am the firstborn, I am figuring out everything for myself. So I would have said, I come from a small, you remember the story of Gideon? I come from the smallest family, you know, from the smallest clan, you know. And here the angel is calling you the mighty man of valor. Greatness does not come from greatness. Greatness comes from continuous growth. Okay? So, whether you believe in yourself or you don't believe in yourself, even when you least believe in yourself, you will say something and it will change someone's life. Okay? So your issue now is about showing up, even when you least believe in yourself. You're like, you know what? Uh, I don't come from this. I don't have this and I don't have that. And you show up anyway. You speak. Let God use you. Let him speak through you. Because some of the words that we are going to speak are not even ours. So when you avail yourself as a vessel and you are used by God, it's not that you're going to take credit, but after some time you'll be like, nah, who am I? I've gotten to those moments so many times. I'm like, who am I? You look at my background, where I come from, and wh whatever, I, even where I am, I have not yet arrived. There are places I have gone to, and I am speaking to presidents, and I'm like, now, wh what, uh, what authority do I have to talk to presidents? You get it? So I would have said, ah, maybe sins and sana. Do you know Tragala Nyok Sindikaya Balala? Ah, this one seems to be the one that is more eloquent. This one seems to be the one that has a better profile. This one seems to be. And let me tell you, there are times where I have let God flow in my life. And I'm like, you know what? I disappear, just appear, do your thing. And let me tell you, I will speak like a... Po there are times you've seen me speak and it's like I am speaking, but I am possessed. <laughs> As in something just takes over. I don't know whether you will understand this, but if you, if you understand God and how he works, you will understand that it is very possible. Because sometimes, not sometimes, at all times, God knows whoever is in the congregation and their needs. You are a human being, you don't know their needs. So sometimes... 
I have changed messages. For example, what I prepared to speak today is not what I spoke. But when I came here, I felt the inclination to speak about what I spoke about today. And it's possible there is just one person or two people in this room that were supposed to take what I'm, I'm supposed to speak. You get it. So now it comes from never prepare a message thinking, ah, I am going to blow their minds away and I am going to, to please them and I am going, let me tell you, you will go back and everyone will be looking at you as in, did the talk end? <laughs> what, 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 you know people looking at you like they have not gotten anything. But the moment you're like, you know what, I am going to take in as much as I can. I am going to do my own due, due diligence, research, sit down, map out what I'm, I want to talk about, what has impacted me, what has helped me, what I know is going to help many. And you come and you do your job of delivering without being arrogant, without being braggant, without, you get it. So imposter syndrome is in our heads. The best thing you do is show up. Even when you feel otherwise, show up. Even when it is speaking loud in your mind, show up. Okay? Number two was? Can you choose a niche randomly? Or you have to choose a niche that you know something about. Now, whether randomly, whether you know something about it, that is not how we have to choose a niche. Okay? Niches are chosen in different ways. Some of us niches choose us. Okay? Some of us niches choose us, and some of us we go ahead and we actually choose the niches. And uh, uh, for example, when you look at your personal story or the thing that you want to help people in, just like I've said, your pain can be a way of choosing your niche. And you're like, you know what, I have gone through uh, depression, mental health battles, and right now I want to be able to educate people about mental health and be able to, as in, it, I ca you can talk about mental health for a hundred years and you will never finish the content about mental health. Because you, when you sit down and think about the times that you've doubted yourself, the times where you were, you were suicidal, the times where you got disinterested about everything, you got disengaged in, uh, from everything, a time where you looked at everyone and you, as in everyone seemed to not make meaning in life, you realize that there are people that are going through me. Whatever situation you have gone through, there are people who are just fresh entering it. And it's possible you're at the tail end of that issue. And now you have, you are equipped with knowledge about how you got into this whole situation. And when you are in the middle of the fire, and you can help the person in the middle of the fire to tell them, keep walking. Don't stay in one place. Okay? And it's possible that you're totally out of the woods. But when you look back, there are people who are still struggling. And you still want to hold their hands to be able to come out. So you realize that sometimes we choose our niches because of the pain that we have gone through that we can speak vividly about. When I talk about narcissistic and toxic relationships, don't cross, <laughs> don't cross in front of me. I don't know if some of you are. Uh, as in, I just... I don't like it when anyone takes anyone for granted in a relationship or marriage. Because I have seen people do that. I have seen in my own family. And my purpose for wanting to help marriages and relationships came out of personal pain. So to me, it's a personal agenda. It's a personal mission to see marriages happy and relationships happy. But you realize that that was born out of pain. Now, my mentorship was born out of experience. That I went through building. I went through all the ups and downs. I went through all the failures that I could have gone through. I went through all, like everything, and I managed to build something that not not only I call beautiful, but other people call beautiful, that it is helpful. And I knew that I could never help the whole world, not even the whole Uganda. It is too big for me to help. So that means I needed to create an army of people that are also super gifted. God gifted them differently, but to be able to point them in the right direction, to be able to build their brands and be able to impact and influence people and make money while they are doing it. Now that came out of experience. Some of us, our niches are going to come from witnessing other people going through. And I said, never in my life with anyone come into my circles and they suffer or they build a brand for a longer time that I took. 
I should be able to give you the map to build for a shorter time than if what I built in 20 years, you should be able to build in less than a year. Okay? So you realize that experiences, for example, someone goes through being a chef and they learn to cook and now their niche is in cooking because they are going to help other people learn how to cook. And let me tell you, there is no niche that does not pay. No niche. Okay? There are people that have gone ahead, they've gone to China, Nasubula, they've never pangi their business, nagende China, nagende taki nasubula, and now they are mentoring other business people how to break through into China and taki and be able to buy and bring and be able to. So they will walk them step by step. This is how you, you save your money. This is who you work with. This is how you bring your shipment. This is how you clear from revenue authority. This is how you calculate your profit off that container. You get it? Because of experience, they were through it and they, they have mastered the art of. Of doing it and now they are teaching it to others okay and some of us it's uh, we've we, we see people going through something and we have the mercy upon them and we want to be able to help them not because you uh, for example the people that are, are, are helping um, let me say people that are underprivileged Okay, some of them it's because they were unprivileged at some point, but some of them it's because I'm in a place where I can be able to help. Okay, so I am actually lending her a hand. So, what happens is a profitable niche has to be something that you are very passionate about. People are willing to pay for it, but it is in alignment with your values. Now, that is what we call a profitable. People are willing to pay for it. And I think, of, uh, I mean, Coach Haruna has told people to make soap. He has gone through the experience of manufacturing soap. And now he's teaching others that you can actually have a constant income while you are manufacturing soap. So I will teach you how to buy the equipment. I will teach you how, how to buy that material. I will teach you how to start uh, uh, to brand your own soap. I will teach you how up to when you have a finished product and guess what? I'll even teach you how to market it. Isn't that what you're doing? So, that is a niche in its own. So you realize that niches are not just random. It has to be something that is ached in your heart. That when they wake you up in the middle of the night, it's something that you'd love to do. It's something that you'd love to talk about. It's something that contains your mind. The biggest amount of day, you keep thinking about it. It even owns you up. That is why at some point, people are able to leave formal employment and cross over full time into their niches and into their purpose and building their brands because they feel like, you know what, this has over consumed me. I am thinking about it. Instead of a client comes and I'm like, ah, ah, abeda you are you were in content creation, you were about how do I grow my numbers, you were about, you know, how do I monetize this, how do I build a funnel, how do I do all these things. Your mind is consumed. In a nutshell, in a long shell, niches are chosen, okay? And sometimes God chose these niches for us. And we must be able, that is why I say sometimes we find purpose, and sometimes you, you can even ask your, your, your friends, ask like six or seven of your friends what you're good at. Sometimes that's how we find our purpose. And someone will say, nae kati, wewe ito kakubi engoye. Like we ronda ronda nyo, ate ye la agende la kurielo, ate kakati akoteka kutuse, ate kache, teka jeyo figa yo bluunji. And you are busy wanting to be a personal growth coach and yet you would have been a fashion coach. <laughs> that you would have done it so well. That you would have dwelt more on personal branding and or etiquette or fashion and it would have, your world, that is why when people practice wrong niches for a very long time, when eventually someone tells them that eh, what you like most is actually a niche, it can be a niche, all of a sudden their minds, you know why you feel like now you're seeing things in color, eh? You're like, eh? Bully Joe. Why? Because... You underlooked it. You didn't think that is a niche. That is something that can actually, you can operate in. So I want you to think, 
Mole is a healing coach. We started this mentorship and on the list that I gave them, I don't know whether you have seen that list on Facebook, on the Facebook group, on the private Facebook group, there is nothing like a healing coach. There are all sorts of coaches, I think there are over 50 niches. But for her, she came to me and she's like, I feel like I, I, I fall under personal growth. I feel like I fall, but I don't want to be, I, I want to, to be in healing and trauma. And I was like, you can be a healing coach. And since then, we have groomed more than 10 healing coaches and they're doing so well in healing trauma and being able to, to help people transition in their lives. But that her healing niche came from her pain. And I think she has shared with, uh, uh, with, with us so many times. Okay? I need you to be able to broaden your mind. And there are people who are niching in, in creating better wives. You've not seen them. Creating better wives. They're just creating a community of better wives. And before you know it, they will write a book about being a better wife. Before you know it, they will have a membership about building a better wife. And then they will have multiple courses, like 10 courses that people can go and buy off their sites about being a better wife. And, get, and guess what? They will have events and people will attend and they will make money and monetize that niche. There are people who are beauty coaches. You've seen them. Yeah, and some, someone will pay to learn how to do makeup. And they will learn how to do makeup for the night events. They will la pay to learn how to make uh, uh, makeup for work. They will learn how to make, as in, it depends on your creativity. Right now, you are the only one limiting your, yourself. Does that make sense? Let's go to another question. Please ask your question because we, we don't want to leave any stone unturned. Let's have the microphone move. We have across here and then we have... Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Gift. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for Coach Hilda, for the gift she is to this generation. Um, personally, I have listened to so many people I have listened to so many motivational speakers, but when I came here, um, things were different. I learned how to, to practice what I have studied. For example, last week, mm. she talked about decluttering yeah. your phone and what. So I used to have struggles in the morning mm. to look for what to wear, and it would disorganize my whole day. Wow. So I went home that evening. I decluttered my wardrobe. I removed everything that I was not putting on for, for like uh, six months and, and, mm. and more. Mm. So these days, I am so organized in the morning, I know I'm going to put on this, I'm going to put on this. Wow. And I used to waste so much time. Mm. I would get so stressed. Mm. And my husband would even leave me. He would be like, nah, you go, like your wardrobe is full of clothes. Mm. Mm. How come you're failing to get what to put on? So wow. I thank God for that. That's beautiful. Um, and then from my take home for today from the first session, mm. I, have, I have learned that clarity mm. means I have, to, I have to start my journey from the end. Mm. I, have to, I have to look at what I'm going to achieve, and mm. then I start from there, draw mm. a vision, mm. um, note down goals, and then break, down in, break them down into tasks that I want to that I'm do. going to, yeah, to mm. do. Mm. So my question mm. is, I have had challenges in relationships, mm. especially with mentors. Mm. I think I've had like three of them. Mm. But these people come into my life and they look like destiny helpers. Mm. But along the, along the way, they start to act funny. Mm. They start to put conditions of like, if you can't do this, mm. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot proceed with mentoring you. Mm. And usually, I'm on a landing curve. I'm up there, mm. and then this person says, because mm. most of them, I tell them, I am married. Mm. I am married. Mm. But along the journey, they start putting conditions. They mm. be like, if you're not doing this, I'm out. Yeah. And then, and then I go back down to level zero, mm. and then I, I have to start over again. Mm. So I don't know if I'm the problem, if there's something I need to work on in my life, mm. or they're the ones who are the problem, or mm. maybe 
that's the time they had to live my life. Mm -hmm. So I want to understand, I, I need to okay. know what to do. Okay. Okay, so relational intelligence, I think that is something that um, my mo I'm really, really interested in because once you fail at relationships, and not just romantic relationships, as in all the blessings that we get come through relationships, but guess what? Most of the pain that we get comes from the relationships as well. So both the highest joy that we get and the worst pain that we get both comes from people and relationships because we relate with people. When it comes to mentorship, just like I said before, you have to be very careful who you choose, especially in the mentoring arena. But not the carnal kind of choosing, because the carnal kind of choosing will tell you that person is high, so when you follow them, you're going to get to where they are. I want us to be able to engage, number one, our sixth sense, and then our intuition. Whether you're selecting a business partner, whether you're selecting anyone, because let me tell you, when, something ta when someone decides to jeopardize your life, they can twist it around. But sometimes there are people that have seen that coming and they say, I knew it. Like, I saw it coming. They couldn't place a finger, but they felt it that there was something off. For example, a person that starts to give you conditions, they don't start giving you conditions when they are giving you conditions. They started conditioning you long time ago. You didn't just see it. So that is where your eyes, not only the carnal eyes or the physical eyes, but when you are a people helper and you're building a brand and you want to be able to pass on your legacy, you should be able to activate your sixth sense and your intuition that you can tell the end before the end comes. Yesterday, I was telling someone, there's someone who is very prominent, I will not mention their name, uh, to, 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 to protect them. But this person came to me at a time where I'm out, I was also at a growing curve. And now they came to me for mentorship. When they came to me for mentorship, I gave them a chance to meet them. I remember it was a call. I think they got my number on radio. Um, and then we met. They had just come into the country. We met and talked. The first three minutes I knew I can never mentor this person. I knew that this person had their own agenda and their agenda was not mentorship. And guess what? That was the first and the last time I ever met that person. Now that person has gone on to be, to be great, to build, you get it? And there are certain things I had that were happening with what he was doing and what he was building. And it's exactly what my soul warned me about. And I will tell you that it's a difference of more than 10 years between when they sought for mentorship from me, but I knew they were not seeking for mentorship. I knew that this person just wanted me to open certain doors for them. You know how, uh, take, me, take me here, because they trust you, they can trust me. And so I'm like, what am I joining? To my brand and we should be very careful because you can equally yoke yourself with someone that you shouldn't be yoked with and let me tell you other people will dismiss you because they feel like you're also a bad seed because of the person that you go so for me in less than three minutes of meeting this person i knew it's not some someone i needed to build my brand close in close proximity with and I know they could have said a lot, or either ye panka, or ba ye kolachi, you get it. But I knew I had the witness of spirit inside of me that that was not the time. And there are so many people that came to me wanting to mentor me, and I also rejected them. Why? Because I, they also had their own agenda. You get it. And so when you pick on someone to, be, to, to, to mentor you, you have to have a mapped up journey of what this mentorship going to entail, okay? And then you should read the signs in the messages, in the callings, when you meet, when you do not miss any signs. 
do they long for for more privacy than it is for outward uh, out, out, outward meeting do they do they um, make jokes sarcastic jokes that are slippery that some some of them will, some people will make sexual jokes and you will think it's a normal joke because they can even make that joke when everyone is around. But they are preparing you for when you are alone that you will be susceptible and accepting because you saw them make the joke with everyone else. You, you get it? Okay? So you be very, very, very careful. Because that same person, once they get a chance of uh, misbehaving in your life, they are, the on, they are the ones that are also going to actually spread the news of how bad you are and how not good you are because then they, they would rather downplay you than uplift you. When anyone ever jeopardizes and plays around with your brand, just know the next thing is downplaying you and not uplifting you. It's only noble people that uplift a brand and are able to say, for example, right now, there are people that invite me to speak and I'm like, that chance will be better for so and so. And I will recommend and I will tell them this person is good, this person, I've seen them do this, I've seen them do this. Why? Because I know they've been in my circle and they have worked hard. When I tell you to shoot videos, when I tell you to do all these things that, you know, at the end of the day, you can have time on radio, you can have time on TV. It's not because I am just hyping you up to go through the mentorship. It's because I want to see who is doing the work and who is not do doing the work. So that when I get to the part of recommending, I know who I'm recommending and who I'm not recommending. You get it? So, mentors can also kill instead of building. And sometimes God allows that certain people break away from us so that he will build us better. And sometimes the building can be slower than when you had that person in your life, but it is a sure building than the quick building that would have crumbled any time. So when we use that uh, analogy of, of the door, don't hold the door open, especially if there is anything that you saw that did not align with your values. The other thing that I didn't talk about, a mentor has to align with your values. For example, you can't go to a mentor, ngaya kiritiza monsasi, nasabo, and Shirain. And then you're like, ah, Yalina change agala. Let me go. What kind of anointing are you getting? <laughs> because you, you are drowning in what they believe in. They are they, they are infectious and they are contagious and they are spreading it all over you. Because um, mentoring is a god is a godly virtue that he permits because he knows that there is a download of some sorts. So, what are you downloading? Hmm? So, you be careful. Do we have values aligning? Okay? If we don't have values aligning, then we cannot, two people cannot move together unless they agree. If there is any disagreement anywhere, for example, you're like, ah, when they tell me to do this, I will say no. That means even the mere fact that they even asked for it, you did not have aligning values in the first place. So I'm thinking you should be grateful that that ended so that you can build on a solid on a solid ground and maybe their part in your life was the part needed to put together and that they were not meant to be with you for the rest of the journey. Some mentors come into our lives for a time and then some mentors come into our lives to last for a lifetime that even after 20 years we will bre break bread we will you know we, we will be together but there are those people that i know i am mentoring and i'm going in this boardroom but there are those that i have mentored for the past 15 years and we are still on this journey together okay okay so uh, that was a question can we get another mm -hmm. good evening once again good evening i'm so glad to be here I feel lifted in okay. some way, like at least some weight is off. That's good. And my, my, my caution, okay, my takeaway mm. from the last episode is complacency. Yeah. Like, to me, most of the times, it is always me who put, like who puts myself down. Mm. 
I can sit down in my head and, you know, I always do self-prep and, you know, we, we, we have to do this, we got this, mm. and all that. I always tell myself I want to be an early person and when it comes to night, I don't get to sleep even when I now want to be an early person. Mm. But I find myself busy on the phone and before I even know it, it's already 5 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And that's the time I said, I'm, 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 I'm going to be up, well slept and refreshed, but yeah. I don't get to do that. Mm. Like yesterday I had to make a phone call, but I did not, cause the day before I did not sleep. And by one, p.m. of the next day, I was already burnt out. I, I, I'd even collapsed in town because I did not sleep and I had to run some elads around. By one, I was just dying. Mm. My eyes were sore. My body was tired. So all I needed was rest. And I slept from 2 up to 8 p.m. So at least I've learned it has to be you to do the work. Yep. No one is going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you tell yourself you're going to do it and you don't do it, the brain is on you. Yeah. No one is going to, even if you do counseling, even if you get therapy, yeah. a thousand times, no one is going to walk that journey with you. That's Everyone true. will tell you what to do, but it's about you to do it, to, do it, yeah. to create the life you want to live mm. and live in it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So at least I really want to do better in that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's very I want possible. to do better in that. Mm -hmm. I know I can do better. I'll take a step at a time and at least and stop that habit because th there are times when I keep on doing the right thing. You, you said about meeting with God and that mm. personal communion. Everyone was doing it at the beginning of January. But yeah. guess what? Mm. Here we are in February. You can't even pray for five minutes. Mm -hmm. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It really hurts. Mm. So I'm going to do better. I know I can do it. And it's for myself. Yeah. Transformation begins with us. Yeah. It's tra it, it begins with us. That by the time you even open your mouth to tell anyone anything, whether in therapy, whether in a counseling session, whether it's on a TV show, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Instagram, as in you should be able... You know, sometimes there are people who speak words. You're talking about waking up early. <laughs> if people peeped into your life, what exactly would, would, would they see? You get it. For example, I think I've made sure that I even inform you how I'm not an early person. I am not an early person. Because I do not want to lie to myself. Even when I tell others that wake up early, mbagamba, manya, your routines and who you are. But when it comes to working hard, I can work hard until 2 a.m. But when it comes to mourning, and that also comes by the virtue of the fact that I'm self-employed and all those things, I'm just not a mourning person. But do not be uh, double-tongued, that you say one thing and do another thing. Chikulu midiza. So even when at the start that is who you are, you seek to self-evaluate and say, you know what, who am I going to help if I cannot even help myself? I need to be able to help myself to fulfill my own promises. That is the number one act of self-love. You know, we think self-love is going to Serena and taking a picture with, you know, with the good side of our face. Self-love is keeping your own promises. That I promised myself I'm going to eat well. I'm going to, I'm going to rest. I'm going to, t to do exercises. I'm going to, to shoot this amount of videos in a, in a, in a week. That I'm going to to prep my content so that I just don't bump into it. Some of you, you'll be there and then you remember to, to put on the camera. And that is when you're planning now, what am I going to talk about? But you had all the days to line up the things that you were supposed to actually talk about. And then you say, oh, I'm a last minute person. <laughs> in people helping, you have to have these things flowing in your head so that you can be flexible while you are delivering. And it can even be... Um, 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 it, it can be even nice while you're delivering it. Instead of uh, kutuka, ka, you're like, uh, after point one, point two. <laughs> after point two, point three. Have you understood? 
<laughs> uh, where is the microphone? Please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Actually, what I wanted to ask, it is related to what you're from talking about. Mm. How do you arrange your speech? Mm -hmm. Sorry, how do you arrange your content while mm. you're speaking? Okay, now w when it comes to shooting videos, you realize that okay, there is always beginner, the intermediary, and then the one that is you know already already there. When you are beginning, you definitely have to like put a lot of thought into it and a lot of planning into it. But sometimes we put a lot of thought into it and a lot of planning, and we lose the authenticity. Like we over prepare, and a person who has come, have you ever seen someone who has come with their cup paper? In there. <laughs> and they are shaking. <laughs> or they put up the, 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 um, the camera and then they start because they, they crammed either the flow of the points and now one point has kept their head and now they don't know what's coming next. You get it? That is why I'm like, fetch from your own past examples. When you are starting, speak to the person that is 10 years younger than you. What were you going through then? Okay, what didn't you know that you know now? That when you open a microphone, you can speak without even searching Google or without putting a, a point after point. Just imagine you are speaking to this girl or you're speaking to this gentleman and you're telling, you're telling this person, where You get it. Agamba, have your own, but do not listen to just anyone. Choose the people that, as in choose your friends carefully. It might sound like it has been said a thousand times, but when you say it and you ca it's coming from the heart, we will know it. We will feel it. Has someone ever said a statement you have heard a million times, but it all of a sudden makes a lot of sense? And it, you feel like it has hit you different. Why? Because you felt their genuineness when they were talking about it. You get it? You felt their, their genuineness. And you're like, you know what? I missed my life because of the kind of friends that I kept around. And some of you think that you're having a good life. You're thinking you're parting. You're thinking you're doing this. But after you get pregnant in high school, everyone else is going to turn their back on you. You're going to be the old one and everyone is going. As in someone will feel like, wow. This person actually means what they are talking about. You can talk about a scenario where someone conned you of your hand, hard earned money. You can talk about a scenario where you didn't put much attention to your books and you failed, not because you were daft or not because you were not wise, but because do you see how you have so many normal things but nice things going on in your life? You can give us an experience of how you met your husband, how you met your boyfriend. Because in as much as we are choosing niches, but you realize that when you choose to talk to leaders, do you realize that leaders have marriages? That leaders have children? That leaders have businesses? So that means you must have knowledge that is versatile and spread around even when you are majoring in one aspect of leadership. When they ask about business, you should be able in position to give something about business. Because many of them will come to you with real life issues that they have failed to make a decision. So you have to know something to do about, uh, with, to, with decision making. So how you create content? Look at the normal surroundings. I look at the normal surroundings, Holy Joe. You remember when I told you the analogy about, um, uh, about traffic lights and how I was driving one day and someone sent me a message and uh, I, I, I concentrated on the message instead of concentrating on when the traffic lights were letting me green. And all of a sudden, I am, the people are hooting at me. I don't want anyone to hoot at me, but I am the one who is not seeing the lights. And then all of a sudden, I... I have to put my own mouth in my own nose because someone is hooting at me. And I was telling you about how some people want their priorities to be our own priorities. But it's possible I could have looked at the message and I'd be like, Njaji damwe danga mazoku parkinga. But how, do you know when someone is writing, this is urgent, you feel the need to open and see eh, what is urgent. And yet it's not the, that matter of, of urgency. So look at the surrounding. There are so many things. Sometimes you look at the street children, you look at the people, you look at your friends, the stories that you've had. Look at social media, plenty of scenarios. If you wanted to talk about them, just go to Mama Tendo.
yeah. you'll get a thousand things to talk about. But sometimes we think we need to be too organized in order to create content. We don't actually want organized content. I don't enjoy organized content. Even when I know that I have to be organized when you're on TV because then everyone is watching you and you can't be joking all the time and doing all those. But when you find someone that is just minding their business and having fun while creating, creating content should be fun. There are sometimes I say certain words and I am watching myself and I'm like, did I say that? You get it. So... I, w I want you to, to get in the habit of finding meaning in everything that is around you. Every meaning that is around you. And that is where creating authentic content comes from. Hmm? That you don't need to actually Google and ask you know, now how to stop procrastination. Ask yourself, that day I actually did what I was supposed to do. What was going on in my brain? Hmm? The day you did, because what we are going to be opposite. The day you did what you are supposed to do, and you felt good, what was going on in your brain? Number one, it's because it was too important to you, and you could not leave it. Do you see how you come up with points? That it was too important that I could not leave it to chance. I had to handle it myself. And number two, it had money element to it, and I needed money. So there is no way I would not do it because I needed money. And number two, if I had not done it, maybe I would not get the job. So that means there was something attached to, a promise attached to whatever I was doing. And so I needed a job. You get it? So now you have come up with three points. And let me tell you, I will relate with those three points. Because chances are, when I also did something, when the last time I did something, I did it because of those three things. And I'll be like, yeah, she's very right. Why do you think people usually respond with, oh, I needed to hear that. Oh, that relates to me. Oh, why? Because you have said what is happening in their own lives. So content should not be hard. When you need to go and research, when you go to answerme.com, when you go to, uh, even when you go to, to YouTube, by the way, you can research about the most trending topics in your niche. And they can give it to them, give them to you. And then you can ask yourself questions and then you can go to multiple people, see how they talked about it. And then you don't talk about it the way any of those people talked about it, but you reproduce it the way you actually understood it and how you have seen it play out in your own life. So that means never speak something when you actually have no experience about it. You get it. And experience does not mean that you have to have gone through it. There are people that have helped women give birth even when they have not given birth. Now that is an experience. You get it. There are people that have helped other people bring up their children even when they don't have children of their own. That is experience. You get it? But not just out of the blue and you're like, you know what, let me just tackle this. Is content creation hard? What is hard? Hey, now that is that the hardest thing is you bringing yourself to, to do it. Last time I told her to make a video. I told her we are not starting this session without creating this video. The camera is not looking good. Now again, down on the camera. Uh, you people stop talking. Or oh, color, you look the other side. And what, <laughs> sometimes we even fear other people. You're like, oh, Baba Nagamba, she. Tetwina che tugenda kugamba. Tuine vizibia febi tumala. We are minding about our own businesses. So mind about yours. Total world is that. Don't think for us. By the way, that's the other thing you should cut away. Don't think for us. We will take care of ourselves. We will either like if we are to like or we will dislike if we are to dislike. So now you can't decide for us. So now can you do you? You do? You. So that whether we like or we don't like, we chaku new midday and you're like, njaku chidamu encha, njaku chidamu no lulala, whether muchaga do, wate muchaga de, nange, wajaku wa yaba antu wangi, katunda vya ante gikira, haba gendo kwa gali change. Bad black ayandu wade yaba bagali vili. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? 
As in, when you think about those complexities, then you're like, I am the one berating myself. Actually, I should have had a PhD in content creation long time ago. But I am just taking my time overthinking the ideas, thinking for people, wanting validation from other people. Go ahead and do you. What you feel to do, do. Some of you have content in your phones that can go up to March or, or April. The videos that you have, the B-rolls. You know B-rolls? Do you know B-rolls? B-rolls are these videos where someone uh, puts the camera and they mind their business. And then they are able to come and make it a reel and put on words on top of it. They were not saying anything. So tell me that you can't even take a B-roll. You overthink your hairstyle. Like one day I will go to saloon and then that is when I will take a video. Nedda, but make her be honest. How many of us have said that? You know, I, I will buy a new cloth. Wanji? Kale, until I buy a new phone. Hii inai katika na madini sabu. No butai imbo wa fee. Bula bika loko. Njakuli namba kanga. I have moved into a nice apartment. Ah, hii these chairs. Hii they look so bad. Hii chikala chino. Kale, so you stay in wishful thinking and it will never happen. But I will do, hii do you see how people make nails? I one day I will make nails and then I will, I will, I will come and also do like this when I am cont creating content. Do content over in Angelazo Ziva Munimido over Ziju de Taka over. Do you see people Ngabatega camera live when they are in bed sleeping and 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 snoring and people are on the live watching yes. the whole night? I was like, us foolish Galatians who bewitched us? If we are not bewitched, then I don't know what we are. <laughs> like, seriously, the things that people like are not what we think they should like, so stop thinking for them. Give them what you think. Do, do, provide your own value. Okay? And not everyone is supposed to like your content. Not everyone. You will find the people who will be your diehards. I cannot even take a minute listening to her. Every day when So someone, you will be someone's cup of tea and to another person, you will be the poison. And that is okay. That is how the world functions. Right? Yeah, so don't overthink content creation. Because everything, whether you're going to make sales, content creation is at the highest, content marketing is at the highest of making sales right now. So some of us even fear to sell. It's okay. Give them value. That is where we say that you give them value, you nurture your audience, and then you convert. That is how it works. Okay? Build your brand, provide value, nurture the con. Because you nurture, when you provide value, the value attracts. Right? It's like a funnel. When they get into the funnel, now you start nurturing them. You start saying, aha, banabazaba ngobe de wjo. jo. Ngabri kanakunjogera depression. That means they're interested in hearing about depression. That is how you ask them. If you have any questions, bring them. Before you know it, you have content for a full year out of the questions that they have given you. You are nurturing them. Before you know it, you're saying, you know what? I have uh, 10 steps of recovering uh, from, um, from, from depression. And it is at uh, 150,000 and this is a course that you can buy okay before you know it the ones that you've been nurturing are the ones because now those ones are like what we call the um, the, 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 the clients that are warm eh? they are warm clients they are not cold because they're cold you have to make them warm and then before they can buy now these ones that you've been nurturing and now they have warmed up to you and now they know what you are selling and even if they don't buy today they can buy tomorrow or they can buy next year because they know what you have been doing so that is how content actually attracts it nurtures it converts because at the end of the day, we want to be able to earn at the other end of it all. But you're not going to earn while you're overthinking everything. So you're not providing the value. When it comes to nurturing, you're not nurturing. You're nurturing while you're hesitant. We are reading all the hesitants. And we are like, you know what? 
katumuwe mobu da kule buwana kula na ate gira bia unlimited you someone can come back and say last year I stopped watching these people and social media has given us uh, so many tools that we can unfollow you, we can block you, we can unfavorite you and you will never appear in our feeds ever again. If you're giving me manyanga why should I see you on my feed? No want you? Some people don't tolerate me as a mentor. I will tolerate your growth. But believe me, the market will not tolerate your, your growth. So that is why whenever you get a chance to provide value, just say, in this season of my life, let me do the best that I can with the available resources that I have. And that is thriving. You thrive in every season. So that when you get to 10 years back, you look back and you go, oh, shooting but in that season when you were shooting them, you were doing the best that you could. Okay? So when you're delivering, over deliver. Give them as much value as you can. Make sense? And these days people don't like uh, long um, introductions. Hi guys, everyone is saying hi guys. Okay? And everyone is saying today we are going to talk about this and this. So these days we actually want you to get straight to the point. We don't have time for pleasantries. <laughs> that is how that that is how far content has evolved. We don't want. full Thank you for coming. Join in, join in. You keep coming. You keep coming. Olia tu kira ona kubuza gundi muamla bi mnyanya gua muamla bi. Azinne mwa choya gala kulaba. Esa we yaku gugu muda gaba mnyanya gua yaku zechi. And then before you know it, by the way, you are hooked. Why? He didn't start. Now, because you're like, you get it. Let someone watch your content. You get it. Abuze. Oba abuza, oba kusanzewa, or uh, trace you back to your page, find you, as in give people some hard time. But get straight to the point. But the point in a way that is enticing and hooking. Have you ever been depressed to the point of wanting to kill yourself? When someone hears that statement, it's like, I want to hear what kind of depression that is. Even if they're not inter interested in depression, anyone will be interested to, to find out as in a fananetia your depression that causes people to want to kill themselves. Okay? Does that help? Okay. That's Good evening, nice. everyone. Ma, thank you, Dr. Holder. For real, emitungena bitegera. Kubanga. But there will be nyo nyo nyo. Nkulaba videos to hold, was called Yamasanga and Zidakati. Yes, that is the energy you're putting in me. I thank you so much. It's so, it's a little bit of 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 a little but solo kujere gani ba kuzi mchikati I was like I'm not going to say it in tiyo ba nalingo kadama that experience tiyo ba dengo tso mesa ako so kati now times nagenze nchi teka muti I have to do o kubera ngamba kola nchi ngamba ski zano balaga that experience so echo ngenda tani koko kubera ngachi kola nchi ngachi ngachi teka munga mutoxi zange o kongero baski ziza ne chila la Changeze, oralero, kukube ranga. Success, success is maintained. Mm. Over success is not owned. Maybe get car over the videos and bad day in take hanga yunga nezu running. Eh, nangam eh videos and as the chin could be de. Nanever follow us very young ago TikTok. Automatic TikTok young, it's Matthew Agency Services Limited. Mm. We are dealing in real estate. So, Kati. Ningamba, Kanjirangu, me, Kirizamo, take Ayo. 
na yi for real ba followers si balaba ba yongera ko likes si zira ba ze yongera ko so na echo na cho nyonge de kwera nga chitegera anti yeah. success, success has to be maintained mm. and it's not owned yeah we know kuongera ko paka 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 mm. Mm. Paka paka teri kuzikiza. Yes. So ngenda kuongera kwera nga nchikola nchikola nchikola. Kwa zine chila chenja galo kwebuza. You tell us to be okubera okubera mwula mwe tuwa galo okubera. Hmm? Zengo mtusa gala kutambula nyo na ewa luo mwe ngamba eh ni kaboda kena alinya na kebira. Tulisiko ka ezine bini solo zise vinga ni mbira nga wakola mchino. Na ni kanga Ninye, nenga tupo leo, nandi tambu deo, nenge na nengamba, buwebunobula mbwe njagala okubela. Hmm? Sima yoba, onte, mchitege de chibuzo change. I think mchitege de choya gala okutegeza. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, that, obula mbu wandi ya gado okubela munti, wandi ya gado obula mbu wangu, wangu idizi wako. Hmm. Uh, instead of obulamu obwo kwe kalubiriza hmm. so uh, cho we, che wafunamu is bera mu bulamu bo wandi yagadde as in bubere mukati hmm. you get it hmm. but the thing is waliwo mutango go ino kusasula makati gawoli ne wo yagala okutuka and sometimes wo mutango go demanding that we rekereze ebintu ebimu hmm. for the greater good you, you, you get it. So it doesn't mean also oh, loku o ku sandwich tivo mobili gonoga mantu wale don't call yes again a colachino. Nienda ko kwe yangu yi dizako. Na ye noga mantu many or wale ro nienda kuba nienda kola in a sacrificial way, I will do it because I want to use this money for this. You get it? I'm trying to widen it so that for now we can we can be able to benefit from it. Yes, we are saying live your good life and um, some of you will say, ah, can it wale ko out ndiye mede ye mitu wale abidi. Mama abadi mede ye mitu wale abidi ba ino musa igwa blue. And then all of a sudden, maybe zezandi kuyambi okugula data, zezandi kuyambi okukolachi. So, oweranga abusa madala ne oguayo wali and yet waliwo olutindo no kola chi oluje totambuli de ku the bridge that you're supposed to to be able to move on so i would say growing in an organic way is very very uh, very important okay so that you don't skip levels and then regret and say why did i skip levels once in a while if you must treat yourself treat yourself but even when you're treating yourself know the level of treating you yourself Okay, so that you don't uh, actually overdo it or do it to be seen or do it for other reasons, but you can do it for your own exposure and say, you know what, I wanted to see what does this experience look, look like. Avantubasa Sula Valentine, never gain a remember limited Avia Red, never gained a several kushara to never tula, never by Jacob will you more hundred dollars because of a plate of food that has two meats like this, like one, two, and Naka Naka soup of Kayuako. Have you ever seen those continental dishes? Naka soup of Kayuako Wakati, never take a co French beans, booming a bully way booty, never. And then never take a co cola cola. And then Baku Jaco, a mitola, a Saturday Mosamfu. Oh, to the one that can't carry. Until you join that data, so you can't log on to the mentorship platform to watch videos. Oh Lord, forgive my diversion, but you understand what I'm talking about. Yes, so you. Cut yourself some slack. Sometimes, treat, yes, treat yourself. But when you need to be resilient and create and be sacrificial in the way you're building, be sacrificial in the way you're building. Okay, have we crossed? Do we have it with there? Mine is a request. Mm. Mine is a request. Yeah. I noted that you have an, a notebook on Beyond Success. Mm. When I was watching the content on YouTube, yes. uh, I kindly request if it. I can have access to that pamphlet. Thank to that, you. To, the, to, the, to, to that the booklet? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to share the booklet. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, I'm going to share the booklet. Because again, you're going to, to also influence lives using this booklet. Wherever you go, wherever you... I know that it will be a very good tool. So I'm going to share that booklet. Thank you, Coach Hilda. Kindly elaborate more on who a people helper is. Mm. A people helper. Okay. Now... A people helper, just like you hear the word, a people helper. We all have different niches 
Some of us here are actually business people, can't do business and you're doing everything in the whole world. So you niche down and say, this is what I am doing. These are the projects that I am dealing with. If you're a coach, you also have a niche and you say, okay, I'm going to niche in uh, mental health or I'm going to niche in personal growth or I'm going to niche in relationships, okay? So you realize that every one of us, every assignment that God gives each one of us is for people helping. Because even Anansi is a people helper. So you realize that there is a variety of people helpers, but there are people helpers that hold others' hands, not because of the injections that they give them, but because of the motivation that they give them, because of the inspiration that they give them. You get it. And then they are able to inspire them to move along the journey of personal growth and even become the be their best versions. And then there are those that are involved in healing, that I will talk to you and I will understand where you are, whether it's a depression, and I will give you tools to be able to help yourself get out of that depression slowly by slowly. You get it? So different niches require different tools and different uh, ways of doing things, but you realize that every one of us is a people helper in their own regard for as long as you help turn someone someone's life around help them make a better decision help them live a better life you're giving them hope to actually live to see tomorrow you are a people helper by the way and you're helping people to actually actualize when i come with my dream i want my suit to look like this you're helping me actualize my dream so you are being a people helper and that's why i'm saying that people people helping can be monetized any kind of people helping can be monetized that even a nurse or a, a midwife can be able to mentor other midwives where we are we are an inform in, in an information era okay and information plus technology but information is actually taking over it's going further Technology is the career, but information is, is going further. So you realize that you must be able to understand that where I am. You see people monetize preaching. Wanji? Yes. You get it? That is something we would have said. People are monetizing shrine work. You get it? So even for, for you to come, Nenku Gamba, your body is actually a pair and you need to have A, 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 a sized dresses or A sized skirts as in that if there are people that are just measuring in etiquette, etiquette, just etiquette. There are people just are measuring in womanhood just to teach you how to be elegant and a cute woman and they are making a lot of money. So that means anything can, can sell. You can monetize anything. You fair to nyoma, even into a magazine. You can be a consultant. Okay, so people helping is barely people helping. It's an assignment that we were given, and everyone on earth has something that they can do to help another human being. Okay, the only difference is some people wake up and build dreams. I mean, build brands, and they are able to nurture those brands and grow those brands, and they are known by everyone. And there are people who are people helpers, but they are not help known by everyone. They are also helping one by one. Things like that. Right? Content uh, website builders are people helpers. They are helping people actualize their, their dreams. App builders, like software engineers. Ready, I mean, everyone is actually being a people helper. But every kind of people helping can be, can be monetized. And that is, what, uh, that is where we will end this talk uh, today. And I need us to, number one, do not hesitate. If you have a question, you can get into my inbox so that we get to, uh, to be able to break down that question. Personal evaluation, we already started to be able to evaluate where you are and provide specific tools as pertaining your specific call and your assignment so that you can map them out. Now, as we speak here, it will be, it's general knowledge, some of it, some of it it's specific knowledge, but when we do evaluation, then it comes down to you as an individual and mapping out how can you be able to monetize, for example, events planning? How can you be able to monetize 
premarital counseling. How can we be able to monetize what kind of, and in evaluation that is when we even talk about what kind of streams of income can you be able to create within what you have and what can you start with that people have a demand of and you can easily sell. Because the moment you start sell, selling something, then you know that you're going to want to sell something. When you start creating a community, your community will demand that you show up more and that you don't just show up with videos or you just don't show up saying serious things, but you show up to nurture that kind of community so that we can be able to draw up uh, that map as well and know how we can be able to roll out. Otherwise, from me to you, is a good night.